Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to take a look at a uh, guitar-rific band, okay, that uh, falls into the kind of melodic death metal camp. I'm talking about Sweden's Arch Enemy, a band that I got into back in the early 2000s because I'd heard so many stories about the twin guitar attack of Michael and Christopher Amat, the Amat brothers, and, uh, of course, I love a twin guitar attack, right? Anything that's got uh, dual guitar harmonies and, uh, you know, thunderous riffing, I'm usually all over. And then you throw in uh, some pretty interesting vocals on top, all right? Uh, in this band's history, they've had three different singers. Uh, I got pretty taken with this band's music. You know, they, um, they've got ten full-length studio albums. Uh, I have all 10, but I can't track down their latest for whatever reason. I know I have it here somewhere, but uh, don't know where that is exactly. So anyway, I'll talk about it. I won't show it. The rest I'll show. But uh, really good band. Really talented players. Uh, I mean, you know, whether you like like death metal growls or not, musically speaking, these guys bring a lot to the table. And if you just love tasty, melodic, shredding guitar solos, uh, you know, done really, really thoughtfully and tastefully, uh, I think you'll you'll dig this band. But again, you know, if you don't like the growling vocals, well, you know, there's not much I can do there. But uh, I think a lot of really good anthemic songs, really melodic music. It's it, brutal at times, but this is not, uh, you know, like Cannibal Corpse or Morbid Angel music. This is uh, definitely a little more refined, uh, definitely a lot more suitable for those who like, you know, Herculean guitar music, right? Um, but... Let's be frank. Still pretty brutal music, I think. So I'm going to start off with my least favorite uh, at number 10, go all the way to my number 1. Uh, coming in at number 10 for me is going to be their 2014 release, War Eternal. So this is the first album with uh, X, the agonist vocalist Alyssa white Gluse. Gluse, 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 however she says her last name. Uh, on vocals, she replaces a uh, long-standing vocalist, Angela Gassau. There's uh, Alyssa right there. She formed the uh, the agonist for, for a number of years, uh, who were becoming a pretty big band, uh, you know, at least on the uh, extreme metal circuit uh, by the time she was asked to, to come into Arch Enemy. Uh, also here, long-standing founding guitar player Christopher Amat. Uh, has left the band by this time, and he is replaced just for the album uh, by ex arsist Arsis, I should say, guitarist uh, Nick Cordell. Arsis, another really, really good melodic death metal band with lots of progressive tendencies and shredding guitar solos. So he really fit right in on this album. Okay, unfortunately, didn't let his stay in the band didn't last too long. But uh, you know, for me. I, I, this album kind of fails to deliver. I think this, for me, is the least enjoyable Arch Enemy album. Has some good songs, don't get me wrong. Definitely does, but I think um, the band is not quite gelling together yet. You know, you got some some new people in the band. Uh, you know, the band itself was entering a period where their music was becoming a little formulaic, okay, and lacking that little bit of a spark, and I don't think they quite hit it here. All right, Um you know, this is one of those albums for me that uh, you play it, and I'm like, all right, can we get to the guitar solos? That's not a good thing, all right? That means the songs themselves are not really holding your attention, and you're just kind of waiting for, uh, you know, Michael Amat and Nick to just kind of go berserk and trade off some tasty Thin Lizzy-style leads and stuff like that. And that's, you know, that doesn't say much for the rest of the album, unfortunately. Uh I think, you know, you listen to this compared to the previous albums, I think Alyssa has more of a scream style compared to Angela's, you know, deep-throated growl. Uh, but it fits the music just fine. I think she she actually slots right in here, no problem. Uh, Never Forgive, Never Forget, strong tune. Uh, the title track, War Eternal, is a great song. Easily the best song on the album. Um, just too bad the rest of the album wasn't quite like that. As the Pages Burn, another really strong song, probably my second favorite song on the album. Uh, no More Regrets, pretty catchy. Uh, those are the main highlights. The rest of it, eh, it's okay. It's nothing spectacular. It's kind of by the book melodic death metal. Uh, not overly memorable, but you know what? You got a handful of pretty good songs, and uh, I think the best was yet to come for this new lineup featuring uh, Alyssa on vocals. Coming in at number nine, going to go to 2011's Chaos Legions. 
So this was the last album to feature Angela and Christopher. Okay, Angela, of course, left the band to go and uh, manage the band. All right, so she leaves the vocal slot to go manage the band. Christopher goes off to do other musical projects, right? Uh, there they are on the back. Uh, this, you know, considering all the strong albums that came before this, this album was, to me, a, a real disappointment. And it just, it just it's lacking energy. Um, you know, it seems like the band has kind of hit somewhat of a creative wall here. And I'm just finding a lot of the songs on here. It's just, God, we've kind of heard that already before. And just not terribly memorable. Um, but, you know, a lot of good guitar solos, some pretty good riffs. That's, you know, that's like the, the main point of Arch Enemy. But you got to love the songs, too. And I find I'm not loving a lot of the songs on here. Uh, Cult of Chaos, good tune. Bloodstained Cross, Thorns in My Flesh, Vengeance is Mine. Those are all really solid tracks. Um, you know, and truth be told, it's not a bad album. It's far from a bad album. Uh, it's just somewhat formulaic Arch Enemy. All right, coming in uh, number eight. This is the one I do not have in front of me. I have it here somewhere in this mess of my closet that is more recent stuff that needs to be kind of, uh, you know, put in with everything else and a lot of kind of stuff I, I tend to like over the last usually like every year you know all the stuff I get during the year I just kind of throw in here and unfortunately I haven't like done a uh, nice cataloging in probably two years so we've got some stuff floating all around here that's got to get uh, where it needs to be and so anyway Will to Power from 2017 is the one I don't have to show you this is the second album with Alyssa on vocals and new addition to the band from Nevermore the guitar shredder virtuoso Jeff Loomis uh, pretty strong album. Much better than War Eternal, in my opinion. Uh, here, Alyssa's kind of growls, sounding more confident. She even throws in uh, some clean vocals here and there in a couple spots, which she used to do uh, with her former band, The Agonist, quite a bit. Uh, the Eagle Flies Alone, Blood in the Water. That's got some killer dual riffing and soloing from Amat and Loomis. Uh, First Day in Hell, really brutal. You got the tasty instrumental Saturnine uh, and the real progressive track My Shadow and I, which I think hopefully hints at some of the stuff that they'll be doing in the future from this band. So all in all, really cool album. Uh, definitely stronger than the two that came before, and I think they're moving back into the right direction, which is great to see. And here, actually. More, actually, it's more great to hear. Um, all right, next up, I'm going to go to 1999's Burning Bridges. So this is uh, their last album with original vocalist Johan Leva. There's the guys in the band. Okay. Um, Charlie D'Angelo also on bass. This is the first album there is Charlie right there. You know, he's uh, obviously spent time in Merciful Fate as well. Um, here, you know, you've got a band, again, kind of at a crossroads. All right. This is their third album. And uh, it, some really good material on here. Uh, the band tossing in some grindcore and prog metal elements with their melodic death metal framework. Um, here they're really starting to incorporate more of those melodic shredding guitar solos with lots of harmonies uh, that we would see all throughout their music going forward. Uh, the Immortal, great song. Absolutely astonishing solos in that song. Uh, Dead Inside, absolute riff fest. Well, tons of groove though. All right. Tasty, Thin Lizzy style harmonies, you know, housed within that death metal framework. You're starting to hear a lot of that on this album. Like I said, going forward, Silverwing, Demonic Science, both brutal death metal tracks. Uh, Seed of Hate contains some real complex thrash riffs. At times, these guys really kind of hit on some of like the classic Bay Area thrash style mixed with death metal. Really good. Um, Charlie D'Angelo, you can really hear his bass on this album, which is really cool. But for me... It's kind of apparent on this album that Johan's vocals were not really suiting the band's style any longer. Uh, he, for me, I, you know, I never really liked his vocals. I'll be, I'll just throw it right out there. Uh, I, the first three albums have some groundbreaking stuff on it. I just never dug him much as a singer. He's got more of kind of like a hardcore bark. Um, and it just doesn't really suit the music. I know there are a lot of people who love his vocals. I totally get it. Um, not for me though. Uh, I much prefer Angela in this band, to be quite frank. Uh, again, that's I got into the band with her as the singer, so maybe that's it. But I just think that by this album, his vocals are just n sounding like like they're just they're not part of the music anymore. They don't really fit. Uh, their music is taking on much much different avenues, going in different directions, and he's kind of still doing the same, uh, you know, 
lack of range vocal style, which uh, they really kind of had already passed, and they were looking for someone a little more dynamic at the time. But some really good songs on here. It's it's a strong, strong record. All right, coming up next, uh, 1996's Black Earth. I love some of these album covers, too. Okay, Black Earth, their debut. Really strong album. Razor sharp riffing and loads of guitar solos all over the place. Uh, again, you got Johan's mix of hardcore bark and death metal bellow. Um, you know, doesn't have the greatest range in the world, but you know, early on it kind of suited the music. Uh, Bury Me an Angel, great tune with an absolutely killer breakdown at the midway point. Uh, Dark Insanity, totally brutal. You got uh, Eureka is slower, tons of groove, but still really heavy. Kind of remind you know, at times. Uh, Parts of, of these early albums remind me a little bit of Celtic Frost, obviously with lots more virtuoso guitar playing. Uh, Cosmic Retribution, Transmigration Macabre um, is also a terrific song, constant riffing, uh, pretty much a pulverizing album. It's a really, really heavy album. Uh, it relies less on melodies, though, of what you would see on future albums and more on straightforward crushing death metal, which is why I know a lot of old school people really love the first couple of albums more so than the later. I mean, I get it, you know, I kind of don't feel that way, but uh, I do enjoy these albums quite a bit. Number five, I'm going to go to 2007's Rise of the Tyrant. All right, you know, 2007, I was listening to this band quite a bit. Uh, shred, guitar solos galore all over this album. Uh, Blood on Your Hands, great song, memorable song. Got Angela, her vocals dripping with venom, nonstop assault of guitar thunder. Great chorus on that song. You got The Last Enemy, Fast and Furious, uh, I Will Live Again, even more melodic. They're adding just lots of catchy bright melodies to the music, even though it's really heavy and brutal. Uh, the Maniacal Tile track is absolutely relentless. Uh, Vultures, really cool song all the way at the end of the album. Uh, approaches prog metal complexity, but it's really, really brutal. Uh, and you've got a, a really, really strong, potent, bright, clean Frederick Nordstrom of production on this album. I think he worked really well with the men. So I dig it. Good album. Comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, I actually had this higher, and then, uh, you know, the more I kind of re-listened to a lot of these albums, the more I was kind of like, yeah, I really dig this, but I like some others better. Uh, 1998 Stigmata. So this is their uh, second album, possibly their most punishing album. Uh, an endless supply of brutal riffing and drumming and, uh, you know, Johan's, you know, guttural roar, whether you like it or not. Um, Beast of Man, you get the blazing instrumental title track. I mean, these two are my brothers work so well together and they can absolutely wail on the guitars you know michael's kind of like uh, got that michael shanker thing going on and christopher does a little bit of that with a little bit of like the neoclassical stuff it's really really uh tasty majestic melodic guitar solos on these albums uh you got S sinister mephisto which is this big bludgeoning but tons of groove track dark of the sun Riffs and solos all over the place. Black Earth also crushes, ironically, on this album, not on the album of the same name. Uh, Bridge of Destiny, another great, great song, really complex. Uh, you know, I think it's a pretty amazing album, despite, for me, Johan's kind of one-dimensional vocals, which to me is easily the weakest part of these these early albums. What can I tell you guys? I know he's got a lot of fans out there, so uh, but that's, that's just my opinion on it. All right, number three. Uh, my top three I did quite a bit, and man, I had a hard time deciding which of these three in what order. Um, but I'm going to stick with the, with my last configuration here. Anthems of Rebellion from 2003. It's going to come in number three for me. Got a really fat Andy Sneap production on here. Uh, this is the second album with uh, Angela. I got any pictures of them in the band here? I, I love Angela. And, I, and you know what? I, I thought that when she was in the band... Uh, they were such a live force to be reckoned with. You know, she's up there with the, the reddish blonde hair, totally in shape, running all over the stage. You know, that totally demonic growl, right? It's really cool stuff. Uh, Silent Wars is a great, great melodic death metal anthem. Furious riffs, snarling vocals, doesn't get much better than that. We Will Rise, another one of their more well-known tunes, just has this anthemic feel. Tons of groove, you got... Big, big riffs. You got kind of spooky synths in the background. They would occasionally use keyboards to kind of add some color and textures. Uh, you got the wild and riffy Dead Eyes See No Future, another killer song. Uh, the mid pace crusher Exist to Exit. Uh, Dehumanization is big, complex. Uh, you know, throw in a couple of uh, really blazing instrumentals because they would do that from time to time and, you know, 
these guys could put out an instrumental album and I'd buy it as well. Uh, a real winner of an album. Could even rank higher. Could even rank higher. Really good stuff here. All right, number two, I'm going to go with 2002's Wages of Sin. So this was the debut of Miss Angela Gassau on vocals. Uh, let's see if we got any more full pictures of the band. Oh, there she is again. I'm going to keep showing pictures of her. But uh, I was looking for a whole picture of the band. Do we have one? I don't think we do. Anyway, good album. Uh, you know, her absolutely ravenous death metal growl is, you know, in sharp contrast to Johann's more, you know, hardcore style bellow. Um, or, you know, like early death metal bellow. It, it, it couldn't be more different. Uh, Enemy, Enemy Within, faster, more technical. They really amped up the complexity and the speed on this album. Burning Angel, loaded with gorgeous guitar harmonies and pummeling rhythms. you got Heart of Darkness, absolutely crushes one of their more popular tracks. Absolutely great song. Uh, Ravenous, blistering, sick drumming from Daniela Erlinson. Really, really great drummer. Uh, Dead Bury Their Dead has some huge, massive riffing going on. It's just a, a killer album from start to finish. Dig this one a lot. Pretty big seller for the band, too. My number one, uh, this is really the album that uh, I completely got into the band with. I, you know, I started listening to them before this came out, but this is the album that just kind of completely swept me away. And there, there might be a lot of folks watching who uh, won't find this to be among their top favorites, and I, I totally get that. But you know what, you know what it is, guys? It's like sometimes your favorite is the album that really got you into the band. Maybe it might not be technically their best album uh, when you talk to the masses about it, but because it has that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Gets you right here, you got to go with it, right? Doomsday Machine from 2005. You know, I saw them a couple times on this tour, and there's just some absolute uh, melodic death metal anthems on here that I love. Uh, you know, you got production by uh, Ricard uh, Bengston and mixed by Andy Sneap. This album just sounds ferocious. Uh, it's brutal, yet it's really accessible. I think on this album, they, they were like, okay, we can still make this really challenging extreme metal music, but we want to make it so that it's memorable, okay, and it's accessible. You know, Angela still sounds as terrifying as ever on here. Uh, My Apocalypse is an absolutely moody, yet crushing track. Great guitar work. Again, I'm looking for a picture of the whole band. Why are they not doing it? And, you know, this is a... Uh... There we go. That's what I was looking for. There's the guys and gal. I mean... Angela's a hottie. <laughs> she is. Um, what else we got in here? Nemesis is a melodic death metal anthem. I absolutely love Nemesis, and I always, you know, all the times I've seen these guys live, I love when they play that. It's just, you know, everybody gets into it, and, you know, Angela's just up there, and up, oh, awesome stuff. Carry the Cross, another great song. Uh, Taking Back My Soul, also really memorable. You got the more thrashy, I Am Legend, Out for Blood. Uh, Mechanic God Creation absolutely kills. Uh, like I said, the production is crisp and potent. Just a really great, great album with a cool cover. And that is my number one pick here in the Arch Enemy catalog. So, backtracking, we've got Doomsday Machine coming at number one. Number two, Wages of Sin. Number three, Anthems of Rebellion. Number four, Stigmata. Number five, Rise of the Tyrant. Number six, Black Earth. Number seven, Burning Bridges. Number eight is uh, their most recent album, Will to Power. Number nine, Chaos Legions. And number ten, War Eternal. So again, I know we're going to have, uh, for those of you who are fans of the band, I know we're going to have all sorts of different configurations and favorites in the comments below. And that's as it should be, because we all hear these albums differently, right? Uh, and I know there's going to be some folks who, uh, you know, older school extreme metal fans who are going to lean towards the Johan Leva era. And that's totally cool. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of fans as well of the kind of mid-period stuff, which, you know, I absolutely adore. So anyway... Put them in the comments below. Interested to see your uh, your list, your favorites, and visit us on the web at www.seatranquilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Remember, if you like what you see, please do hit us up on the Ko-Fi link below. Uh, buy us a, a tea, uh, iced tea, all right, a mug of beer, a CD, whatever you want to do. All your contributions are greatly appreciated to help keep the channel going. And uh, we've also got the link to our merch uh, merch site. 
to get all sorts of cool stuff that is Sea of Tranquility. So we'll see you guys later on. We got more stuff coming in the days and weeks ahead, so don't miss out. Make sure you subscribe, all right? If you're watching this channel and you have not subscribed, uh, please do because we're almost at 50,000 subscribers. We're only a couple hundred away. I want to hit that 50,000 before uh, Christmas. I'm sure we, sh we will. Probably we'll hit it in the next week or so. But uh, the quicker the better. I want to hit that 50K number. So if you're, there are folks here who are watching every day and, hadn't, and haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. It'll definitely help us out here. So thanks again, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.